A survey by the website grandparents.com finds that more than half of all grandparents are providing some sort of financial assistance to their grown children, and that increasingly is in the form of multi-generational living. We went to Duxbury, Massachusetts to meet one family conducting its own crowded house experiment. Lois and Derek Lug have always been close to their grandchildren. May I have a kiss, please? But never this close. <laughs> This summer, the Lugs went from living down the street from their grandkids to living down the hall. I don't know, it's just weird that they live next door, just like in the same house. In June, they moved in with their daughter Victoria, a manager at a local telephone company, and her husband Jason, a stay-at-home dad. Do you want to to do it? They now split the rent of this four-bedroom rental home with an in-law wing. It was like a step backwards almost. But financially, it was a step forward. By splitting their rent, each couple is saving $200 a month. Plus, there's extra savings on monthly bills. Our electric bill is uh, $80 for this month. And uh, previously, I think they paid about $60, and we paid about $90. That translates to each couple saving an additional $150 a month on utilities and cable. Don't waste the water. Besides, with the extra cash, there's some unexpected bonuses. They always have laundry all over the darn house. Unbelievable piles of laundry. I said, listen, why don't I take over the laundry? And that's what I did, and that's my contribution. Father and son-in-law have grown closer since sharing a workspace in the garage and take turns watching the kids while their wives are working. I mean, we're obviously too, uh, quite separated by age and uh, our personalities, you know, but got to kind of learn to live with it, you know, it's just, uh, you have to give and take a bit there. The men also do grocery shopping and cooking. The two couples split costs with Victoria and Jason putting in a, a little extra to cover the kids. Dad, this is so good. Overall, each side is saving three to four hundred dollars a month, money that will go towards buying a house if this little experiment works out. It's just like a win-win situation all around. Joining us now, Gary Drevich, senior editor for Grandparents.com. Gary, good morning to you. Hi, Chris. Is the economy the direct result why we see this multi-generational living around the country now? The economy is certainly a big part of it, but it's really calling attention to something that's been a tradition in many families, and families have always been there uh, when families are in need. What's interesting, what a lot of people don't realize, is that in 62% of the cases of families becoming a multi-generational household, it's the adult children and their grandchildren moving in with the grandparents as opposed to the other way around. I think some people say to themselves, living with the in-laws or with my parents, ugh, there's got to be some rules in place. You have some rules here that, that you say can really help if you have to take mm -hmm. this course of action. One is to respect each other's space and time. Yeah, again, you know, in many cases, it's, it's the kids and grandkids moving in with the grandparents, but the grandparents... Really, we really recommend they, they've got to keep their space. Yeah. Um, they've got, in, whether it's a large space or a small space in the house, it needs to be respected, and that's the key thing. And it's also not taking advantage of each other's time. Um, grandparents need to, you know, they're not there to babysit 24 yeah. hours a day. They shouldn't be taken advantage of. Got to have and, their lives, too. Yeah. Uh, make rules mutual. Yeah, whether it's, whether it's, you know, buying groceries, filling the car with gas, or putting the kids to bed, the, the grandparents and parents... Uh, have to give the same message to the kids. Um, they need a consistent message. Grandparents like to break the rules. That's always fun. That's a big part of being a grandparent, and you can't lose track of that when you're living together. But um, when it comes to rules for the kids, the parents really should set the, uh, set the tone. I like this. Treat your family like they're your friends. We always exhibit a lot more patience with our friends than probably with our families. We are, we are patient with our friends. We listen to our friends. We seek them out for advice, and we, uh, and we think twice before criticizing them, which is almost the exact opposite of how we treat our immediate family. So if multi-generational families can remember that, yeah. they'll do okay. A little patience goes a long way. Avoid slipping into old rules. What old rules are those? Well, you know, very often um, adult children haven't lived with their parents since they were 18. And when you're 18, you have a lot of issues with your parents. And people think those issues have gone away, but very often families get together and they find these unresolved issues creeping up. They fall into the old roles of rebellious teens and you know they really need to think that through before they move in and try to unpack that baggage and finally real quickly remember the grandkids are watching the grandkids are watching and that's that's just you know you've got to get along um, if you have issues if you have criticisms of each other you know uh, resolve it away from the kids do not bring that fighting in the house the kids really yeah. take a lot of cues from how the older generations get along all right gary drevich from grandparents.com gary thank you